So um, I'm now going to pass over to, uh, to, to Biren. Um, Biren heads up uh, Invite Media uh, in, the, in the UK. Now Invite Media is our, is our DSP. Um, there's probably lots of confusion, I think, about DSPs. Biren is absolutely the right person to demystify all this. Uh, by the end of this 20 minute session, you will know everything about DSPs. Thanks, Biren. Cheers, man. Thank you. Hi. Uh, probably not the best slot to have uh, right towards the end of the day. Uh, but, um, but sort of the brief, I was speaking to Hannah, um, and, uh, and, and the brief for the session was can you talk uh, a little bit towards um, uh, demand side platforms, real time bidding? Ad exchanges um, and, and and kind of try and start to de, you know sort of demystify that for people in, in in a way. So you know I'll apologise in advance for people that um, are already very very advanced on this side of things, but you know I feel that this is absolutely something at least the fundamentals of which everyone should um, know a little bit about. So let's go. Okay, so you know I've called this an evolution rather than a revolution because I think you know I would love it to be moving along as quickly. Uh, as feasibly possible, um, but actually the, the, the point is is that a, a lot of the change that we're seeing in display buying today um, is very, very much driven by technology and actually it puts uh, Greenlight in a, f in a phenomenal position because you know, Greenlight are deeply entrenched in, in technology, but you can imagine for other big network agency groups, uh, it can be a, a, a big change to go through. Uh, we're moving to a, you know, sort of a, a digital business that is very much driven by you know, technology investment, understanding technology, um, having people operate that te technology and, and, and drive great results for clients. We'll, we'll look at that right at the end. But um, I'm hoping I've made the right choice moving to Invite. So I've been at Google for five years. Um, and, and, and just four months ago, I moved across to Invite. I looked at this stat and I thought that's absolutely where I, where I want to be. So you know, looking at some of the external, um, uh, some of the external uh, information and data that's out there, we think uh, there will be a 250% increase in the amount of volume being traded for display advertising through real-time bidding uh, through the course of 2012. So uh, if the numbers are right, that probably means that of all the money that's spent in the UK on display, about 15% of that will be traded using some kind of real-time um, real technology. So uh, would that be you guys using the real-time technology to do that yourselves or partnering with um, third party sort of networks, quote unquote, um, to have them do that for you. But a, a really, really big increase. Uh, and I think, you know, you know, some of the things that I really enjoy reading, I, I really enjoyed reading a blog called um, Ad Exchanger uh, and another blog called Exchange Wire. So if you guys are sort of into this sort of stuff, those are two very, very good blogs to read and, and then keep up to speed with these things. Okay, so why is the change happening? Um, I believe. First and foremost, um, that you know, networks have done an incredible job um, over the past few years um, in doing something that um, agencies and advertisers really couldn't do, which was the process of going and aggregating lots and lots of um, page impressions from publishers that you couldn't wish to have on a plan, right? So you'd have your big uh, sort of portals and the guys that you, you, you consistently work with on a regular basis on your plan and you would have a number of networks on there. Um, and the purpose of those networks is you want to reach a, a, an incremental audience, deliver good performance at very, very low cost, but you don't want to have 300 additional sites on a media plan, 300 uh, additional conversations, IOs, uh, and optimization sessions on a daily basis with. So networks did uh, a phenomenal job. But, um, bit of over-reliance on networks, I think, to deliver direct response performance. And um, actually, got to a stage where using networks has become inefficient. So lots and lots of ad networks on the plan. All of the ad networks using ad exchanges and, and going and getting the inventory uh, from, you know, all, everyone's getting the inventory from the same sources. As a buyer um, or as a client, you lack the ability to have something called a, a single customer view. Uh, and the single customer view being the ability to frequency cap across all of your campaigns. If you give your retargeting list to multiple networks and they all go and try and buy the same cookie, you actually end up putting the price um, of your own uh, retargeting and your own data through the roof. 
Um, and there's generally a lack of sort of business intelligence, I think, as well. You lose in trading with networks. Um, you give them a budget, they deliver you some performance, you don't really know what happens in between. And you know, the most fundamental thing is the fact that the technology that ad networks use has been completely democratized. So you know, access to exchanges, agencies have access to exchanges now and inventory. Access to demand side platforms and technology to manage bids, again, that's what I do on a day-to-day -day basis and, and, and leave and, live and breathe that. Um, and access to data. Everyone has access to data now as well. So it's about whether you're willing to offset these things um, and actually engage with demand side platforms, ad exchanges and the like to be able to do this yourselves. The first puzzle or the first piece of the puzzle is the ad exchange. So in the UK, um, there are about 13 really, really big um, ad exchanges that you can work with. And again, that sounds inefficient, but we'll, we'll talk about how, how, how things change um, and, and how technology helps you uh, manage that. But about 13 ad exchanges. Um, MSN has one. Yahoo has one. Google has one. Uh, and then you have a whole raft of other ones underneath that. And they are essentially a place where publishers go and put some of their inventory. Um, and some of that inventory is indeed remnant. But actually, they're seeing that because the, 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 the prices that they're getting for that inventory are going up and up and up, they're starting to put better formats, better positions into the exchanges. You may also think that um, a lot of the inventory that we see on ad exchanges is, is of a poor quality, long tail sites, really, really bad. Um, actually, it's not. Um, you know, some of the biggest um, publishers uh, that we, we see our clients trading with through Invite are the likes of eBay, AutoTrader, YouTube, Amazon, Virgin Media, TalkTalk. So really, really good places to have um, your ads shown through the exchanges. And on the flip side, you've got people who buy. And now what's really happened in the last 12 to 18 months is that Balance is really, really good. So you've got lots of liquidity in terms of lots of publishers putting their inventory into exchanges. Um, and you've got a sufficient number of buyers to make it worthwhile for those publishers to do that and facilitate transactions through exchange places. So it's a really, really good, you know, we've hit that sort of threshold and we're starting to push back from, uh, push through that. And the type of buyers we see are our agencies. Clients can sometimes do this um, um, themselves, but uh, less so. Um, and the ad networks themselves. So if you think about ad networks, you or I could go and set up an ad network tomorrow, right? We get access to an exchange, access to a demand side platform, uh, and then we go and, go and buy uh, inventory ourselves. So it's, it's very straightforward. Just to put it into scale a little bit, uh, we see 35 billion ad impressions available um, to purchase uh, per month through Invite Media. It's, it's just an incredible amount um, there. Uh, I said we go, we're dealing with 13 exchanges right now. We're going to be probably connected to 20 um, by, the end of, uh, by the end of March. So that figure you know, will obviously go up by a significant amount again. But really, these, these are, it's a sort of kind of you know, it's, it's number wang, really, sort of the stuff that the, the, the sort of numbers that you're having to deal with right now. OK, so how does everything fit in? Right, so I've sort of just talked about it. Let's have a look at it, you know, sort of uh, drawn up. So you've got publishers, you've got 13, soon to be 20 exchanges. Uh, and it looks relatively straightforward, um, and it kind of is. Um, slight complication you have here in some cases is that um, a single publisher will sometimes give their inventory to multiple exchanges, see who drives the best yield for them. Um, and try and make the most money out of what they can. But if we have this situation with 13 different exchanges, thousands and thousands of publishers in the UK, obviously what you need is a technology layer that sits on top of that. And that's what Invite Media does. Okay? So uh, Invite Media was acquired um, midway through 2010 uh, by Google. Um, Amazing company run by a 24-year-old um, who was 
duly paid $70 million uh, for, his, uh, for his hard work and effort uh, for the previous five years. Done an amazing job. Um, and Invite Media basically allows a single point of access to those 35 billion ad impressions across 13 different um, exchanges. Really, really amazing. And if you really want to talk about sort of, you know, bringing some of this in-house and doing it yourself, getting rid of the reliance on networks, keeping the business intelligence, making sure you've got a single customer view, frequency capped across every single impression that you're buying against, this is how you do it. And this is why people are very, very excited at the prospect of DSPs. The scale that they offer is absolutely huge, just through one very straightforward user interface. Now, if you sort of look at this, it's a bit like search. So um, if you change publishers for search queries, and if you change exchanges for Microsoft, Yahoo, uh, and Google, actually have a very, it is a very similar analogy to draw. The problem is, is that the numbers are, are more significant, and also the fact that you know, a Google search query is a Google search query. It doesn't belong to anybody else. It's not shared with anyone else. You buy it from Google. Um, whereas in this space, publishers do give the homepage MPU to more than one exchange. So it looks like search, but it sort of, you know, it continues to act like display. So it's very, you know, it's a very, very sophisticated medium and, and, and you do need to invest the time and you know, love in, 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 in understanding how this all works. So that's complicated, I think, in a way, but, but reasonably easy way to, to see how that all fits together. Now, you add in one more layer, um, which is the data layer. And again, this is something everyone's extremely, ex extremely interested in. Um, and what you're able to do with a tool like Invite Media or, or, or any other DSP for that fact, um, is to plug in your own data sets. So you can uh, put in your remarketing list, as you would expect, and ask Invite Media to find people that have come to your website but not bought anything across any of the inventory sources that we have available to you. And you can have that frequency cap so you don't have to spam your customer. Now, how annoying is it when you see those retargeted ads with three products in them and they just you see them everywhere you go? You know, after 10 or 15, you're not interested, clearly, um, and maybe that brand should stop doing that. So that's first-party data, and, and it's called first-party data because it belongs to the advertiser. Um, it's theirs, and, and, and first and foremost, that's what you should be using to uh, deliver good performance for your campaigns. The other piece that's super interesting is third-party data. Now, in Invite, um, there are 15,000 third-party data segments that you can choose to target against. And these are provided by um, about you know, 10 or so data providers, the likes of Blue Kai, Quantcast, and Exalate, to name a few. And third-party data um, are pools of cookies that have been uh, aggregated from lots and lots of publishers across the web um, into certain segments. So people that have expressed an interest in holidays in the last 15 days, people that are deemed to be over the age of 35 and earning over 50,000 pounds. So you have the ability to do data-driven targeting across all of those impressions. You have the ability to do standard site-based targeting across all of those publishers, and you have the ability to do first-party retargeting um, through the DSP, across the exchanges, and all through the publishers. So, you know, again, this is why I think, you know, you know agencies like Greenlight are really in a very, very good position here, because what are the things that you need to understand to operate a DSP and make it work very, very hard for you? you know, you need to understand optimization. You need to understand huge swathes of data. Um, you need to understand uh, or think, start thinking about how your search is affecting your, uh, your display buying um, and how you manage your cookies and how you manage your third-party data relationships as well. So uh, it fits squarely within that, within that skill set, really. 
And what's happening is when you're making those decisions to buy impressions through Invite, what's happening is that all of the publishers and all of the exchanges are constantly communicating to uh, Invite Media and saying, here's an impression, do you want it? Here's another one, do you want it? Here's another one, do you want it? Up to 350 to 400,000 times per second. What happens on the flip side is when Invite decides based on your settings, whether you want to target data or retargeting or whether you just want to target the MPU on the homepage of Talk Talk, when it decides that it wants to buy that impression, it puts a bid in within 100 milliseconds. So in the time it takes the page to load for somebody to blink an eye, that impression has been allocated to, say, Greenlight via Invite Media. The advertiser's been chosen and the ad's been pushed out and served. It's an incredible amount of processing that happens behind the scenes, but it's all made very, very, uh, very, very straightforward. So what does that mean, really? Uh, I think in terms of what, dis you know, what, does the, what does display strategy look like in the future? If you think lots of people are doing retargeting right now, um, and lots of people are continuing to buy normal display ads. I think it means two things. Apart from the technology decision that you have to make, um, I think in terms of your media plans, um, they need to have a very, very smart prospecting strategy, uh, and they need to have a very, very smart retargeting strategy. And I'll, I'll talk about those in a, in a little bit now. What's a smart prospecting strategy? So, you know, prospecting for me is the ability to drive new visitors to your website and know that they're truly new and understand that eventually you'll probably be using retargeting to actually pick up the final conversion. You know, we know that only 7% of people really tend to convert on their first visit to a website. So retargeting is important, but prospecting is equally important to make sure you continue to drive lots of new users to your site. So first thing you need, at the very least, are proper KPIs to measure your prospecting activity with. No point expecting them to drive the same cost per acquisitions as uh, your retargeting activity. Just not going to happen. But it will drive people to your site. Once you've got them to your site and on your cookie list, it's like CRM. You've got them. You can re-message them. You can bring them back. You can make them convert. Secondly, um, you really need to separate this activity technically um, from your retargeted activity. Very simple to do. There's something called exclusions. And when you've picked up a pool of cookies uh, of people that have visited your homepage in the last 30 days, you can run a campaign through something like Invite that excludes all of those people and only goes in search of people that haven't been to your website in the last 30 days. It's incredible. Very straightforward strategy. Hardly anyone really uses it. And also, you make sure in that process that the campaign that you've got doing your retargeting for you is completely separate from the campaign that you have doing your prospecting for you, i.e., you do not hit the same person with two different messages. Hey, come to my website, or hey, you went to my website, but you didn't convert. Here's a different offer. So that's, that's what I mean about separation. And thirdly, I won't, I'm not going to go into this too much, but I'm, I should be hanging around for a bit afterwards, and if anyone wants to chat, we can chat about this. But um, utilization of your remarketing lists, your own cookies as an advertiser, to influence what third-party data segments you're going to buy. So this is called lookalike technology. And again, something that's available um, in the Invite Media DSP. You point the technology at your homepage list, uh, and it tells you, of the 15,000 segments that we have available for you to target separate to that, here are those segments that have cookies that look most like the people from your homepage or the people that just converted. So it's, again, it's a, an incredible amount of data for you to play around with and make choices on how to bring people through to your website in. So that's your prospecting. That's bringing people to your website. Retargeting strategy through DSPs. Well, I, I'm a strong believer that you shouldn't hand your retargeting lists to more than one supplier. Absolutely not. Um, and where possible, um, you should keep that as close to you uh, as you can, so keeping it within your agency. And centralizing how you deploy that data 
is critical. And, and, and we see because there's so much scale available through demand side platforms that you can effectively centralize your retargeting into just one place and not give your cookies out to third party ad networks. Secondly, um, you really need to understand uh, what your other channels are contributing to your retargeting. There will come a time, potentially, when even your search marketing CPAs start to look like they're going up. And the reason that they look like they're going up is because you're using search, as an example of one channel, to drive people through to your website. But what's happening is that your remarketing activity, because you're retargeting people that have already expressed an opinion or are an interest in your site, is picking up all of the conversions. So you're sitting there going, wow, retargeting's working brilliantly. Search, natural search, and, and display's working terribly. That's not the case. It's just helping to fuel your retargeting. Uh, and thirdly, um, advanced um, data logic. So this is kind of the ability, very simply, to add and subtract um, different data segments. So you can take your homepage list. Again, I'll go back to that. Uh, for for uh, you know for your brand, and say, here's my homepage list. I'm gonna uh, have only the homepage, the people that have visited my homepage, and a third-party data segment of people that earn over fifty thousand pounds per year, and find out what is left over. So people that came to my homepage and have demonstrated, or we think, earn more than fifty thousand pounds per year. What is the cookie pool that's left over? Let's target that. That's what I mean by advanced data logic. So that was a very, very quick run through of RTB, exchanges, and DSPs. Um, I, I hope that was OK. Um, I just wanted to take you through a couple of things um, that I'm, I think will be really, really big in, in this space in, in 2012. Firstly, uh, on video. So we're about to deploy our first video campaigns. Um, through Invite Media, which will be incredibly, uh, incredibly exciting and, and, and very, very interesting. So people will start to think about real-time bidding for not just direct response, but the ability to do brand-driven campaigns. Secondly, we're going to be doing mobile, late Q1, um, early Q2. So again, adding more scale. You can see what's happening there is, you know, you are going to hopefully, at some point, have a single interface to be able to buy at the very least, all of your display activity, whether that be video, mobile, display, for brand or direct response. And the third thing is this concept of private deals. So a lot of people say, well, you know, we, 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 we've been working with these publishers for seven, eight years now. What happens to all of those relationships? How do we use our buying power? We use it through private deals. What we're seeing more and more is um, people will say, hey, ft.com, We've been working for you for ages. We're working with you uh, for ages. You deliver fantastic uh, performance for us. How about we do something called a private deal, where you guarantee us a certain price or a minimum, a certain minimum price, on a certain volume of impressions, and you make that available through the demand side platform. So, so the number one request that we see from some of our largest uh, DSP customers, the largest invite customers, is, "Hey guys, we've done this new deal with this new publisher." can you add it into Invite Media? And that deal becomes only available to that particular agency or that particular buyer. Then you can do everything that we talked about before. Apply data segments to it, have frequency caps across your whole campaign, including that uh, portion of it as well. So I think that's, that's something that's going to become more and more prominent. We're certainly seeing that in the USA, probably about you know, three to 400 private deals being added every quarter. So uh, the agencies are really, really picking up on that. I said before it was a, an evolution, not a revolution. Um, and I think it is only just the beginning. So I work on the technology sales side um, at Google now. I, I used to work on the media sales side. But it's really interesting to see what we're doing over there. So you know, uh, Invite Media is probably the lead product into the, the technology stack uh, that we're going to make available for advertisers that is already available for advertisers, but is going through a lot of change and a lot of updating. So Invite Media, for starters, is being completely rebuilt. Um, it's going to look a little bit more like AdWords, green on white, for those that know. Um, it's going to have keyword contextual targeting within there as well. Very, very exciting, plus all of the scale that I mentioned before. It will be part of a suite of products that you can take either individually 
um, or as an entire buy side stack. So DFA, which is our ad serving product, um, Terracent, which is our dynamic ads product, Invite we've talked about, um, Double Click Rich Media, which is for your high end uh, graphical ads, um, and also Dart Search as well. Oh, sorry, beg your pardon. So they'll kill me if I if they heard me say that. Double Click Search, not Dart Search. We got rid of that name a while ago. Um, and um, you know, if you're using all those products together, uh, we believe that there will be, you know, a really really big difference to how you deploy display, search, how you measure everything. There'll be a, a, a very, very consistent workflow across all of those products, a consistent user interface. Um, and you know, it's all about efficiency and performance for your campaigns and for your clients. But at the same time, you can plug different pieces in. So if you have your own um, dynamic ads product, for example, or if you have your own third-party data management products, you will be able to plug those in so we're not trying to lock off the ecosystem here. What we're trying to do is have a suite of products that's very, very efficient, and the um, some of the parts is greater than the whole, but at the same time allow you to build points of differentiation um, on top of that and around that as well. So I hope that was interesting. Uh, I didn't bore you guys to death uh, with that very, very late on in the afternoon. Um, and thank you very, very much for your time. Cheers. <laughs> <clears throat> Thank you very much to, uh, to, to Biran. It, it's, it's an enormously fascinating space. Um, it does seem quite complicated, but that's why we're here. That's why Greenlight are here to try and make, help you make sense of this.